What a Duke Cooks, it's your boy the hater up in this piece and it's time for another episode of Hater on the Road, kinda. It was more like Hater on the Uber and the Uber dropped me off at the wrong place but it wasn't his fault. So now it turned from Hater on the Road and Hater of the Uber to Hater Outdoors. That's right guys, that's right. Hater Outdoors. A few things first. I saw the trailer for the Vince McMahon documentary and it looks amazing. I cannot stress enough how much I'm looking forward to the Vince McMahon documentary. I really hope that all of you guys watch it and we're going to discuss it in detail, episode by episode. I don't know if that's going to work out exactly, but probably episode one, day one, and so forth. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm probably going to binge it anyway, so who cares, right? But now, let's talk about a few other things that are relevant in wrestling. First of all, A-Dub. All right, A-W, you might as well be done as far as I'm concerned. They still haven't really... Uh, said anything about their future they talk about like you know basically past glories and let's be real this is done but AEW will always have a place in his in wrestling history as the company where people went to get paid for drawing zero money you know what I mean you got the likes of Daniel Bryan you got the likes of Swerf Strickland these guys can't like everyone in AEW combined cannot draw over 600,000 people so this idea that Vince McMahon and WWE were wrong for releasing Cesaro and Miro and not giving a shit too much about Daniel Bryan. Hell, even Edge and even Christian, who's my favorite wrestler of all time, these guys can't get it done, you know what I mean? And it's not really their fault. Well, for some of them it is. Like, for example, Cesaro's never going to draw because Cesaro's boring, right? And that's what this video is basically about. The importance of entertainment. You know, sometimes we forget. And the hater was reminded of this many times today as I looked at various videos that other people made. Specifically, people uh, in a lot of videos and a lot of comments in the videos were saying things like, oh, WWE is an entertainment company. And they say it like it's a bad thing. Like in the Vince McMahon documentary trailer, which I saw, a lot of the comments were saying basically that. They're like, if you want to watch real wrestling, don't look at this Americanized bullshit, they said. That's what one, uh, one statement said. Don't look at this Americanized... What, what do you mean Americanized? First of all, wrestling is American. You know what I mean? Wrestling is American, so there's nothing, you know, to Americanize. Wrestling is American. It is an American storytelling medium. It's actually, in my opinion, one of the most significant uh, American storytelling mediums or media of all time, right? The fact that some people in Mexico and Japan changed it fundamentally to be presented more as a sport does not mean that when America does it the way that it's supposed to be done, that this is being Americanized, right? But underneath this point is an even bigger concern. And that concern stems from the fact that for some reason, people, the masses at this point, have really convinced themselves that wrestling is something that uh, is important within the context of sports, right? It's important to respect it, right? It's basically everyone is a bunch of gunters, right? Wrestling is not a sport, okay? This is very, very important for people to understand. It's not a sport. The way that a sport is defined, generally speaking, and I don't even agree with this definition too much, a sport is a competition that is somehow uh, carried out by one, or can't be by one person, by two or more people. It's just a competition. The word sport is a synonym for competition. So even something like chess, is a sport because there's a comp there's a competitive element to it. Now, you could say that that's a good definition. I personally believe that it has to be athletic in some sort. And also, I take the Patrice O'Neill definition where it's not a sport if there's no defense. Right. So, for example, golf, there's no defense. I try, then you try, and whoever did better wins. That's not a direct competition because I could try here, you could try tomorrow, and we can compare the scores. That doesn't mean anything. There has to be some sort of defensive skill. Wrestling. Not only does it have no defensive skill, but it fits into none of these categories. Now, people get enamored by the fact that wrestling has obviously a physical component. You know, and that's another thing. When I say wrestling is not a sport, I'm not saying that the wrestlers aren't athletes. There's no doubt about it, right? There's no doubt that Ricochet is an excellent athlete. That goes without saying, you know what I mean? But that's not what matters, right? And some people also point to the alternative. They point to like, well, you know, wrestling is competitive, because everyone wants to be the champion. Well, everyone wants to win an Oscar, but acting is not a sport. You see what I'm saying? Everyone wants to be the richest man alive, but that's not a sport either, right? That doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. 
You know, the way that wrestling operates is that it is a show, right? It's entertainment. So, at the center of it must be entertainment. This is the memo that AEW missed, right? AEW sucks because they really thought, and, they, and this is like, I don't even know if this is forgivable at this point, right? They really thought that the best way to compete with WWE, which sucked and still sucks, right? They thought the best way to compete against them was to make a sports-driven show, right? Where everything is presented as a sport. This can be evidenced, and, you know, they went back on this later, but this can be evidenced by the fact that this was uh, AW's first attempt to, to do this through the, the ranking system and the win-loss records. I still think they have the win-loss records, but the ranking is dead, right? There's no more rankings because they realize that, oh, shit, if we have a ranking, that means that, like, Anthony Ogogo should have had, like, multiple title shots because he has, like, two losses in his career. But then they realized, oh, shit, that means that we have to put Anthony Ogogo in a title match, and nobody wants to see that, right? That's why wrestling is best served the way that it has always been served in America, if you will, with storylines. Nobody cares which circus performer is going to perform better, quote-unquote, this week or next week. That is not a consideration that anybody goes home thinking about. We care about the story. And that's the problem with AEW. As far as I'm concerned, they have no stories. Every story that people point to can pretty much be summed up by I'm better than you and the other guy or gal saying, no, you're not, I'm the better one, right? And that's not compelling because that's the story of every sport, right? In other words, the storytelling in wrestling nowadays is too sporty, it's too real. That's the story of every UFC fight. The whole point is, I'm better than you, I'm going to kick your ass. And the other person says, no, you're not, I'm going to kick your ass. And they fight, one of them wins, the other one loses. The end, great, right? But when stories are introduced, even to real sports, right? So a great example would be Conor McGregor, you know? He introduced storytelling to the UFC, and that's why he's the top paid fighter basically ever, right? Floyd Mayweather is another legend that did the same thing. Hell, the NFL tries to do this. I'll never forget there was a throwaway game between, I believe it was the Broncos and the Giants, right? And it was Eli versus Peyton Manning. And people tuned in, it was a spectacle. The first game when Tom Brady played with Tampa Bay and played against the Patriots was a big deal because there's a story. We're gonna find out now how the story ends. Will Tom Brady win or will uh, Bruce whatever, what's his name? Bill Belichick, there it is. Or will Bill Belichick be shown to be the superior one, right? Tom Brady beat him and then went, went on to win the Super Bowl. So that, that was answered, right? And that story concluded. And that's all we gotta say about that. Now, the same thing is gonna happen in the NBA, you know? Look forward to LeBron James and his son playing together. That's a moment. People care about moments. Now, moments can happen organically or semi-organically, as in the case of, of LeBron James or Tom Brady or everything else that I just said, or they can be forced. The beauty of wrestling is that there's no drawback for forcing it because wrestling is not a sport, right? Like, if, for example, the NFL, whoever decides the schedule, if they did so in a biased manner so that they could match these things up, right? That would be less, less interesting, right? Likewise, um, in UFC, if someone fixes the fight, nobody likes that. People accuse, you know, the UFC and boxing of fixing every fight. And nobody likes that either, right? But in wrestling, you can't accuse anyone of fixing anything because it's all fixed because it's not a real competition, right? In other words, and this is the, the point, the real point that I want to make that nobody seems to get. When you say this guy is better than this guy, it's just an opinion, right? A lot of times I'll say this guy sucks and this guy rules, and people will be like, that's just your opinion, bro. Yes, no shit. You know what I mean? There is no metric to say that someone's better or worse at wrestling. You can say, for example, pretty confidently, like, you know, Ricochet is a better athlete than Pete Dunne, right? We don't know who would win the fight, you know? But we can say that the better athlete is Ricochet because we see what he does, right? We can confidently say that Brock Lesnar would beat up everybody in WWE, right? We have evidence to back this up, right? Doesn't mean that Brock Lesnar is a better wrestler, right? I think one of the best wrestlers in WWE right now is Apollo Crews, right? But this guy's presented as a jobber. There you have it, right? A good wrestler can only be measured by one metric, right? It's not the number of titles he or she wins. It's not the, it's not even the moments. And as sure as shit is not the title reign or the in-ring dominance, which are made up things, right? They're just made up shit, motherfucks. 
I refuse to believe that Gunter can beat up Randy Orton. I don't care if he beats him in a, in a fake match. I refuse to believe it. What matters in wrestling, and it's the only thing that matters, is money, motherfucks. Because wrestling is a business. And if the business is not, is not doing well, then wrestling is not doing well. So with that being said, I gotta say that even though WWE, to me, is not enjoyable, from a business standpoint, they're doing just fine. AEW, on the other hand, is neither of the two. It's not enjoyable to me or anybody else. And as a business, they are utterly failing. You know, the, I saw an article today. It said AW is the second most profitable wrestling company of all time. That's not true. Unless every company is operating on a loss. Because AW is not significantly profitable, if profitable at all. I don't see how they can be profitable paying people three, four million dollars and drawing in 600,000, right? That's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the people from Friends got like 20 million a season or whatever it was, you know? But like they drew millions of viewers. They sold millions and millions of dollars of merchandise. They're making millions, like Friends is making more than AW this year. You see what I'm saying? And they're not paying anybody anymore, right? Maybe some royalties here and there, but that's about it. So that being said, Cucks, it's important for us to kind of recontextualize wrestling as what it is, entertainment. And the way we do this is we pretty much tell people that think wrestling is a sport, that it's not a sport, you know? And also, we can condition them, and I don't mean that in a deceptive way, but I'm saying we can teach them, it's a better word. We can teach them that wrestling doesn't have to be a sport. As a matter of fact, wrestling would be worse if it were a sport, right? In my opinion, wrestling is the most entertaining athletic activity available, right? Like, the hater likes boxing, the hater likes soccer, but I'd rather watch WrestleMania than the Champions League final. I don't even care if it's a bad WrestleMania, right? Because I know that it's going to be better than that. But that bar is not high enough. That's a low bar. Wrestling needs to be not only better than sports, to me at least, right? But it needs to be better than almost everything on TV. And the reason for that is because it has the potential to, because we've seen it before. Like, now, I look forward to Wednesdays, not because of AEW. I look forward to Wednesdays because the challenge is back. Soon Survivor will start, and I'm gonna look forward to that as well. But back in the day, I didn't give a shit about anything else. I only cared about Raw and SmackDown. And I even cared about Monday Night Nitro more than I cared about every other show. But things have changed, cucks. And things need to change back for us to actually have some fun. And I take that however you will, and go fuck yourselves.